The Odyssey Outcome Trial is a really major trial in cardiovascular medicine. It's set out to examine what the role of the PCSK9 inhibitor alirucumab versus placebo might be in patients who'd had an acute coronary syndrome one to 12 months prior to randomization. Such patients were randomized to alirucumab versus placebo and followed for several years and the median follow-up ended up being around 2.7 years, with some patients really followed up to four years and slightly beyond. The study overall found a significant reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events, a 15% or so relative risk reduction. In particular, it appeared that the benefits of this therapy started to accrue after a year or so post-randomization in this stabilized ACS population. The benefits were concordant in the individual components of the MACE endpoint with significant reductions in MI and stroke as well. The patients in Odyssey outcomes were treated with excellent background therapy, including a very high rate of statin use including high-intensity statin use. In patients despite this therapy who remain at high risk, it would appear that the addition of a PCSK9 inhibitor could further reduce their risk of future ischemic events. Within Odyssey outcomes, in particular, the subgroup of patients with an LDL cholesterol at baseline greater than or equal to 100 achieved an even greater relative and absolute risk reduction than in the overall trial. This was true for MACE, but also true for all-cause mortality as an endpoint. In fact, in the overall trial, all-cause mortality was nominally lower, but in the subgroup with an LDL cholesterol greater than or equal to 100, there the effects both on MACE and mortality seemed much more robust. So in clinical practice, what I think I would do is if I had a patient who'd had an acute coronary syndrome and say I'm seeing them a month or two after that initial event, I would measure their LDL cholesterol. I would make sure they're already on a maximally tolerated high potency statin, such as a torvastatin or rosuvastatin. And if their LDL were still above 100, I would likely add azetamide. But despite all that, if the LDL remained 100, that's the sort of patient I think would be an appealing target for PCSK9 inhibition. The results of Odyssey outcome apply most strictly to patients who've had an acute coronary syndrome one to 12 months prior. Whether those results should be further extrapolated to other patients, such as those with coronary artery disease, of course, a purist would say no. On the other hand, the Fourier trial did examine a much broader population with stable atherosclerotic disease, and there the overall trial was positive with a significant reduction in MACE, in fact, of a similar magnitude as in Odyssey outcomes. However, there was no reduction in mortality noted in that trial. So if it weren't a matter of cost, there are many patients with coronary artery disease, especially those with elevated LDL cholesterol, that would likely benefit from this form of therapy. On the other hand, given the cost of these drugs, right now it would seem that the most cost-effective population in which to use them might be what we identified in Odyssey Outcomes, that is patients with our ACS in the past one to 12 months with an LDL cholesterol still greater than or equal to 100. There, given what we observed with alirucumab, the absolute risk reductions perhaps would justify this expensive therapy.